Are you a masochist? Do you love experiencing pain? Do you get a rush when you get so confused that your head might explode? Then do I have a job for you. Try to learn two foreign languages at the same time. <laughs> for real though, as someone who has lived in a few different foreign countries before, I can tell you that learning even one new language can be one of those mentally taxing things that you could ever put yourself through. So I personally can't imagine trying to focus on learning two languages at the same time. But I am also a very curious person. So we here at Brainscape gathered some stories of ambitious people who did in fact try and accomplish this massive feat so that we could understand what such a learner can expect in this process and what advice they could benefit from to make the process a little less painful. I'm Andrew with Brainscape, an adaptive study app that is optimizing how we learn foreign languages through an obsessive focus on spaced repetition. And as people who are always pushing the boundaries of how efficiently we learn, researching how an adult might manage to learn two languages at once was right up our alley. Believe it or not, it turns out that this is humanly possible if you happen to have a ton of commitment and motivation. I don't mean, oh, it'd be nice to learn Spanish and Chinese, so I'm gonna go download Duolingo and see what happens. I'm talking about real motivation. Because there's something magical that happens in the brain when you have a real survival need for a language, like relying on that language to negotiate a business deal or order food before you starve or communicate with your new in-laws. Your attention becomes uber focused and allows you to actually internalize your learnings because you might really need those words or phrases later. So if you happen to have this motivation for both of the languages that you're trying to learn, let's look at five quick tips for doing this the right way so you don't end up accidentally speaking Franz Spanglish Shitano. <laughs> First tip, if you can help it, is to make sure the languages you're learning aren't too similar to each other. Like, I try not to learn Spanish and French at the same time, or Dutch and Danish, or Hebrew and Arabic. When two new languages share so many of the same roots and grammar rules, the brain can start to get all confused and you'll start mixing up words and syntax. Stick to a language combo that is totally different from each other if you can. And ideally, also avoid two languages that both have totally unique character sets from English either, like trying to learn both Hebrew and Chinese at the same time. Try to stick to at least one language based on our native Phoenician alphabet, there's plenty, like German or Italian, so your brain doesn't overheat with all the new characters it has to learn in addition to all the words and syntax. Another good way to make sure you keep those two languages separate in your brain is to keep learning them both consistently. Don't just go one week studying Flemish and then the next week studying Farsi and then back to Flemish the next week. That will mess you up even more because just when you develop momentum and good habits in one language, you'll forget some of the other things in the other language and then you switch gears and your brain just blows a gasket. You need to keep studying both languages every single day if you're going to try to learn two languages at once so that you're constantly needing to switch contexts, which forces you to really internalize both of those languages better. It's actually similar to some guitar advice I once got. Train yourself to be able to play the guitar cold. You just pick up the instrument with no warm up whatsoever and you can play a badass riff. By switching between both languages every day, you're essentially training yourself to play cold. If you're really gonna commit to learning two languages, then commit to studying both every day and commit to using the most efficient method for doing so, which is adaptive flashcards with 
spaced repetition. Why is this such a powerful method? Why am I here at Brainscape so obsessed with it? Well, spaced repetition engages all of the most central mental faculties involved in learning a language in such an efficient burst of time. And it optimizes the intervals between each time that you're asked to mentally retrieve a particular word or phrase. In other words, you learn faster and retain knowledge for longer with less required study time. The good news is that there are a lot of great spaced repetition apps out there. And of course, you know, I'm gonna pimp Brainscape here because uh, Brainscape offers several complete foreign language curricula in spaced repetition flashcard format that will take you all the way from beginner or whatever level you start with through advanced proficiency and not just for vocab, but also for grammar, for pronunciation drills, uh, and other uh, important phrases that repeat in precise intervals based on your own confidence in each flashcard. This way, you can better allocate your study time for both of the languages. You could even use Brainscape to make your own flashcards to either supplement the ones that Brainscape has provided you, or to just create your own curriculum that you're gonna share with other learners in your class or peer group. As someone who invented the first version of Brainscape myself for studying languages, I personally can't imagine managing such a large body of knowledge, even just for one language, without a spaced repetition tool like Brainscape. Of course, used in conjunction with things like reading and watching documentaries and making friends with native speakers, which brings me to my next tip, which is to make friends with native speakers. <laughs> Join clubs, go out, find a tutor or conversation partner, or even really especially get a boyfriend or girlfriend, which is really the best practice. I'm not gonna try to micromanage any more specific advice than that because your relationships themselves should drive your actual conversation topics and how comfortable you are asking for specific grammar help. Uh, all I'll say is whenever you run across a new word in conversation, be sure to write it down to study later. Ideally, even right there in the Brainscape app so that you're really driving your learning by your lifestyle and not the other way around. My last tip is to manage your own expectations about how proficient you really think you're gonna get in both languages. And to do this, it helps to have a decent sense of how many total hours of study that you're gonna need to get conversational in the first place. I recommend that you go watch our other video on how long should it take to learn a language to figure out what's in front of you here and then to allocate your goals and your study time accordingly. If you choose the right combo of languages and you use Brainscape to study and you get the right practice, you'll definitely have a fighting chance at tackling this massive task. Just be sure that you subscribe to this channel or check out the Brainscape Academy to get all our other advice on learning languages, staying motivated, improving your habits, and doing everything else in your power to rise to this challenge.